Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I am very excited because we have C.I. Dixon here, and he is a motivational speaker. He has his own company. He, ha he is, has authored a book, and he has done many different things. He is into helping people get unstuck, and he really has a pep that will get you going. So today he has a whole whole bucket of really good advice for people to help people with their daily lives. And so CI, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do? Well, Stacy, I started out, I, originally I was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And then when I got out of the Air Force, I started a business, uh, a training business where I worked with clients on strategic planning, leadership, communication, team building. In fact, my first three years, I just worked on time management because everyone wanted to get more out of their day. And then it escalated from there into the other areas. And now I also do executive coaching. Uh, during the pandemic, I wrote a book, uh, You Can't Climb a Smooth Mountain. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see my clients. They couldn't come see me because all my training was face to face. And, and I had to get familiar with Zoom too. Yeah. And so they couldn't come to see me and I couldn't go see them. So I ended up finishing my book, which uh, was a great thing for me. Um, one of my mentors, Zig Ziglar, said, see, I, whether anybody buys your book or not, write it for yourself. Yeah. And he was really right about that. He said, just getting it out of your heart yeah. onto paper. So that's what I do. I've had an opportunity, not at the same time. But I've worked with over 10,000 clients, both in the United States, the Netherlands, the UK, Mexico, and Canada. So I've uh, I've had an opportunity to spend a lot of time on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what do you love to do? Because I heard you you mentioned that you really like to your, your your passion is to help others and to help people move forward. And you've done so many great things with your own life. What made you get into this business after you finished with the military and after you started to move on in life? What made you go in this direction? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. I'll tell you what. I was sitting at my Air Force base in base operations. And there's a paper called the Air Force Times that they print, I guess, monthly or could even be weekly. And it goes to every Air Force base. Mm -hmm. And in the back, it had uh, career opportunities. And I looked and it said, OK, we're looking for someone who has a background in psychology or leadership uh, and $50,000 a year. Now, at that time in the military, I was making $17.50 a month. Okay. And I thought, $50,000 a year? Yeah, I want to find out about this. So I called them up, and they said, why don't you come down for a three-day interview? And I said, fantastic. I went down there, and I was so naive because I hadn't been a civilian for quite a while. Yeah. And it wasn't until the last three hours of the three days that I realized they were trying to sell me a franchise. Oh, my goodness. Now... Um, I was so caught up in what they were doing and motivating and inspiring people. And I said, I can't buy this franchise. And uh, what they ended up doing, which really was on paper, was selling me a used franchise. And I went to the base credit union and borrowed a little money from my parents. And I started with a training franchise. Oh, wow. And, uh, and so I did that for many years. I became their world sales leader. Wow. We the... Uh, Number one company in the world out of 600 franchises across the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, I decided, well, you know what? I, I've been writing, I had been writing courses for them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? Why don't you write your own stuff? Yeah. And then I did that. And then that's how I started Dixon Motivational Management. Wow, that's some story. And yeah. it's hard, you know, it, it, when you transition from the military to civilian life, it's a whole different world. It, it's oh, a gosh. lot to get to used, used to. Some it's people... a whole different world. And also leading people, that's different as well. In yeah. the military, people have to follow orders. Right. Not in the civilian world. You have right. to motivate, inspire, and ignite. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. It's like completely two different worlds. You know, many people that I, I've known in the military, that their biggest challenge was transitioning from military to the civilian world. And, you know, a lot of people had a lot of difficulty doing that because it's not an easy task. It's not an easy no. task at all. You know, it's different when someone basically gives you a manual. Yeah. Says, this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to really change. And if it ever changes, we're going to rewrite that part of the manual. Right. And so you have, um, you know, I think, I think um, military was really good for me because when I grew up, um, and I'll not give too much detail on it, but some of my life was filled with uncertainty. Yeah. So in the military, there's a lot of certainty. Mm -hmm. So it gave me rails. Right. And I thought, okay, this is a good thing for me. I thought I was going to spend a career. It didn't work out that way. But I ended up uh, exactly landing where I was supposed to be. Right. Uh, my, uh, I'll just throw this in. My father was a, a Baptist minister for over 40 years. And I thought, look, and he thought I was too. He says, you're going to be a minister one day. And I said, there's no way I'm going to do that. But <laughs> that's for sure. And, uh, and, but I ended up, uh, serving people in a other, another direction. Right. So, uh, and, and that's how I look at my business. You know, I want to, I want to impact people's lives. I want to impact their, they hire me to help them improve their productivity, their on time delivery, whatever the case may be. But in the process, I want to also impact their lives. Right. So not only are they better in business, they're better personally. And what made you want to give you that passion, that 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 inspiration to want to help people impact their lives with positivity and and give them the leadership qualities and the things they need to move forward in life? What made you want to go in that direction and, and what inspired you? Well, Stacy, <laughs> if you spend five minutes listening to the news, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our world is filled with so much negativity. Yes. Right. And in business, we have this term called the 80 20 rule. 20% 20 of your people give you 80% of your sales. Yes. But in life, 80% of life for most people is great. Mm -hmm. But they spend 90% of their energy focusing on the 20%. Yeah. And so constantly negativity is driven. And, and I tell people to think about your senses. What do you see? What do you hear? How do you speak? I said, if all that stuff you put into your mind, your ears, and then you surround yourself with negative people, yes, you're going to be negative. Of course. I said, so I said, you got to make it a practice to read positive information every day. Listen to positive radio. There's a lot of positive radio that you can listen to. Yes. Okay. Listen to positive podcasts and expose yourself and, and use affirmations. Expose yourself to good stuff because if you, I had a client once who could not get off of uh, watching a particular cable news station. Mm -hmm. And he was always depressed. And I said, okay, look, I said, let's set a goal. I said, tomorrow, you're going to not listen to it for two hours. And then we're going to work it up to a day. And then we'll work it up to two days, three days. And just because he stopped absorbing all that information, right? it improved him. He didn't become necessarily super positive, but he was no longer depressed. Yeah. And so I think uh, I was a Boy Scout uh, growing up. Uh, I played sports. And I always had a passion to try to bring out the best in people. I love that. I love that. And I truly believe, you know, when it comes to positivity, positive energy brings positive people, positive thinking brings positive things around you. If you put it out there, it's going to come back to you. So if you surround yourself by positivity, by positive thoughts, by positive people, you will grow, I think, and elevate in life. And, you know, what are some of the ways that you teach others and you practice yourself to actually enhance your positivity, to make you a stronger, better person. Like, you know, I'm sure there are times in your life when you were surrounded by negative people. How did you 
revamp your life so you could have that positive atmosphere? Well, you know, one of the things we don't have a choice of is picking our family. Yes. Okay? But we do have a choice of picking our friends. Mm -hmm. So if I am developing a friendship and I find out that it's toxic. Yes. Or. I heard something the other day that said that if you talk negatively constantly about your partner, mm -hmm. you're really talking negatively about yourself mm -hmm. because that partner is a part of you. Right. So if I'm around a person who's always complaining about their work or their spouse or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I have to distance myself from that. Right. Okay? The, the other thing is I always, as I said earlier, try to read positive information, books like yours, books like I, I have written. So I, I every day I start out with a morning plan of reading for about 15 minutes. Right. I'm positive, even before I start making phone calls, even before I talk to you today. Right. I did that. Uh, and so I do that. And then another technique, and I got this from my mother. Uh, I was coming home. I made it a, oh, and this is going to really date me. <laughs> this is when I had a cell phone that was mounted in my car. <laughs> and so I made it a point every day when I would go home or at least every other day I'd call my mother right and I was calling her she said well how did business go today and I went over all the things that went bad and she said son well what went well mm -hmm. and I told her she says okay what I want you to do is this and I still do this today I got the notebook right here well that's probably 20 notebooks later but every day at the end of the day, I write down what were the best things that happened for that day. Yeah. So often people leave work or whatever, and they dwell on what did not work. Right. That's what they take home. And so I try to, and I'm not telling you my days are perfect. Right. Okay? But, I, but, but what I do do is at the end of every day, I go, what were the best things that happened today? Right. And I think that's so important, you know, because gratitude and positivity are two things that are very powerful in a people's lives. And I think that's a great idea because, you know, I, I journal myself and I focus on the positive things and things that I have gratitude for, because I think we forget sometimes too, the little things in life matter the most sometimes, and we don't realize it. So they, they get taken away from us. And then we yes. realize how valuable they are to us. My my uh, brother-in-law on his voice message when you call a cell phone, he go, and he's always been a teacher or a coach. He says, "Always remember your health is your wealth." And mm -hmm. you think about just you and I being able to talk today. Yeah, you know, and, and, and technology and things of that nature. We, it's the little things, right? It's, it's the little things that lead you. Um, I have a uh, when I'm doing sales training. I tell people that rabbits lead you to bears. And so a lot of times the little things lead you to the big things. Right. Everyone's out there. Oh, there was a book written on uh, like how to catch a whale. Mm -hmm. And so all salespeople are out there trying to just get the big catch. But a lot of times it's the little bitty catches. Right. That lead you to the whale. Right. That's so true. That's so and, true. Uh, and, and I think that another thing that's important is, oh, ah, let's say it this way. The more you give, the more you get. The more mm -hmm. you get, the more you have to give. Right. And I think a lot of times we want to, people want to get, they want to gain. And uh, and we see that on TV. Uh, I, I, the young people on watching TikTok and Instagram and all that. What can I get? What can I gain? Right. Me, me, me. But if you, uh, if you're a service to others, and I'm not talking about you have to have a business like you or I, okay? But I'm just saying, just service to your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or. Uh, <laughs> My neighbors next door, they're not really IT literate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so they'll call me and say, the TV's not working, the computer's not working, <laughs> whatever the case may be. And then they'll call a particular company, which I won't mention, but uh, they sell packets where they'll come and 
you know, uh, and they come by and they can't fix it. And then they call me again. I say, okay, tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to have an hour. So I'll come over mm -hmm. and I'll fix it in 10 or 15 minutes. Right. And, and they're just so grateful to me. They go, we don't know what we would do without you, but it's not. And I'm, I feel better than they do because yeah. I was able to make it happen. You know, right. I understand what I'm saying by that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think in this life, we were not just personal. Right. My personal opinion is we weren't made to just take. If you look out in nature, it's seed time and harvest. Yeah. So nature is all, you got to plant seeds. Nature is always given to us. Mm -hmm. And I think people many times want to harvest, but they don't want to plant a seed. Yeah. Very true. Yes. That's very true. I think people have to realize this. I see it a lot too, you know, especially in our new generations, you know, everybody, even, even older, but everybody wants something, but they don't want to do the work. They want to, they want to have this, they want to have that, they want to become this. But then, like you said, they're not harvesting the seeds. They're not, they're not doing the work that it takes. So they can have that, that field of, of vegetables and fruits and so forth but it really you know if you really want something yeah like you have to overcome those obstacles and you know whatever is holding you back whatever you have fear about whatever is 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 in your way you have to overcome it and you have to learn how to move forward you know with that positive attitude that you were talking about you know in 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 my book i have a chapter of this called turning your stones into steps Mm -hmm. Okay. And in life, we're going to have obstacles. We're going to have stones. We're going to have things that are put in our way. But what what can I what can I learn about it? Right. And so instead of making that, uh, how can I turn that problem into a project? Yeah. How can I figure out what kind of goal to work around, or what can I learn from it, or what can I do differently? Right. And so. The next opportunity, I don't approach the same way. Yeah. And, and that's how we we grow. You know, it's, it's just like uh, it's just like stretching a muscle. Yeah. Every time you exercise, it grows. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with our mind. That's what happens with our energy. That's mm -hmm. what happens with our attitude. Right. I think, you know, it, it's so important to consistently grow. I think so, you know, um, you know, we, the people who think they know everything are the ones who know the least and the people who are <laughs> always looking to, to grow and to, and to learn more and to explore, those are the ones who elevate. Those are the ones who climb up the, the mountain. Those are the ones who, who gets to new levels in life. And, and if you could hold on to that positivity, that appreciation, that gratitude along the way. You'll become a very successful person, both mentally, physically, spiritually, because you'll you'll be under less stress. You know, we all go through stress, but yes. you know, if you handle it in in in, in a positive way and, and in a healthy way, you know, you'll be able to sustain an adequate amount so you don't, you know, harm yourself because seventy percent of illnesses are caused by stress. You know, and in our society today, you know, like you were mentioning earlier. We're surrounded by negativity. We're surrounded by stress. You know, everybody's in the go, go, go mood. Everything, everyone wants it now. Nobody wants to wait. You know, nobody wants to take the time, but everybody wants everything right then and there. And realistically, that, that can't happen. You know, people have to, you know, look at things in a, in a more productive, more realistic fashion. What do you think? I, I agree with that. And in fact, uh, in fact, I'll give you a little side note. A friend of mine who's a... Uh, uh, mental, uh, she does mental therapy, mm -hmm. and she says they've been going to some. You know, they have to always get continual education. Yeah. And since the pandemic, depression and anxiety across the world has gone up seventy percent. Wow, seventy. Oh, wow, seventy percent. That means more people out there are depressed that are not depressed. Right. And so, and, and I think that's why you see some of the. Oh, the craziness, if you will. Yeah. Uh, because of that. 
And then when you think about emotional programming, you think about things that make an impact on us, our, our, our parents, uh, our school system, our work, our society. And many, many times uh, growing up, children are told more not what not to do than what to do. Yeah. So that creates a negativity into their bucket. Yep. Then they go to school, sit down, be quiet, do this, do that, more minuses. They go to work, more minuses. They don't like the boss, the boss doesn't like them. And then they, in society, uh, we talked about the news earlier, or just things that are going around. Yeah. More negative. And so what happens is all that feeds in. Yeah. And that's why we have to, on purpose, take that negative bucket and we have to dump it out. Yeah, and fill it with positivity on purpose. It won't happen. It right. won't happen naturally. No, you have to do it on purpose. And what are some of the ways that you suggest that are effective that you've seen in your own life, and maybe helping other clients? You know, what works to get that negativity out of your life? Are there certain tools and techniques that you suggest? Well, we talked about the journaling. Yes, we talked about reading something positive every morning. Mm -hmm. You know. Also, you know, every now and then I'll watch a comedy movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a, a comedy movie or, or a sport, something that... Laughter. That's laughter and, and, and it's Pleasure. enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Here's something else, too. Uh, might sound a little weird, but go outdoors and stand on the grass without your shoes on. Uh, connecting yourself with the earth... Yes. Mm -hmm. can be a very, very positive thing. It, it gives you energy. Yes, it does. So I, I think that that's so important mm -hmm. uh, that we do things of that nature um, and have positive uh, conversations, positive dialogue. Right. That's very important as well. And uh, there, there is a, I can't, there was a kid song, but always look at the upside. Try to always look at the bright side. Yeah. I mean, I mean, bad things happen to good people. Right. I mean, but try to, if you can, focus on the bright side or or look back. One of the things that I try to do is look back at adversities that I had in the past mm -hmm. that I was able to overcome. Yes. And so I try to run those in my mind. Yes. And a lot of times I would take also, I would take every negative thing that happened to me and I would try to think of something positive at, that came through out of that. So if I went through a tough time, well, it made me more resilient. You know, if, uh, you know, if, if something happened to me physically, well, it made me, you know, gr it made me stronger, but yet I also see things through my pair eyes in a different way. I might have more empathy towards people. I might understand things that I didn't understand before. So, you know, I always try to look at, okay, something not so great happened, but what positive thing happened from it? Yes. I, um, uh, how do I say this? I didn't quite understand cancer mm -hmm. until it arrived in my own house. Right. And my wife's a cancer survivor. And to watch her go through those chemo treatments, lose every bit of hair on her body right down to her eyebrows yeah the whole nine yards and and uh i mean you can watch it on tv and movies and this side and the other but it's not the same no it's not when, uh uh when you're caring for a person and you realize that there there are some illnesses that a person can have mm -hmm. that you can hide like yeah. you can have diabetes and no one knows it right exactly but if you have cancer and you're going through treatments it's all over you physically. Yes, exactly. And so that not only creates the physical problems, but the psychological problems as well. Yeah. And so it made me, you were just talking about empathy. It made me much more empathetic to uh, cancer mm -hmm. and cancer survivors. Right. And so you're right. When we go through things, it gives us resiliency. Yeah. Yes, it definitely does. It definitely does. 
And I, I, you know, like when my uncle went through cancer, you know, I was his caretaker and to see him go through it and to see him go through, um, he had it aggressively to see, see the quick changes in his life, how he went from, from being a well-built man to a skeleton in a matter of three weeks, um, you know, really made me look at life differently, you know, yes. it, it really it, it made me grow mentally and it really made me look at life in, in a whole different perspective and also have gratitude for what I have living in the now. I think so many people live in the past and they focus on the past. We can't change the past. And then so many people worry about the future. Well, we have no control over the future. The only thing we have is the present. So we really need to focus on the present and do whatever we can to better ourselves, better our lives and to do whatever we want, making those dreams a reality. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, I'll tell you something that um, was taught to me, mm -hmm. that human beings can only really control the next eight seconds of their life. I mean, the, just that small span, yeah. the next eight seconds. I don't know what's gonna happen an hour from now. Right. I have to go to the pharmacy, but I don't know in the process what's going to happen. Exactly. Okay? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I have plans. I have a calendar planner. Oh, geez, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Yeah. But the next eight seconds. And so I think enjoying the now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Enjoying the moment. Uh, this past uh, weekend, I, I had an opportunity to spend time with family. Mm-hmm. And I just said, hey, I'm happy that you're here. Yeah. That you're just here. Right. Because uh, a couple years ago, I lost my mother, perhaps the, uh, the most emotional hurt that I had ever felt for a period of time. So sorry to hear that. And I, I think about Holly, she's not here anymore. Yeah. And and uh and now I I still recognize and I miss her, but I'm no longer in grief. Right. So my family that's here, mm -hmm. I go, I'm happy that you're here. Yes. Live, live, live in the now. You know, what can I do? What can I do right now? What's the most uh prosperous and successful thing I can do? What step can I take towards? Uh, my end goal. And then I keep my goals, some of them that are just written. And I know this is really old school. <clears throat> okay. But I have them on a three by five card. I do something on. very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That, yeah. That's on my desk to say, okay, if is what you're doing right now, is it getting me towards your goal and getting back to living in the now? You got to ask yourself, and that's why I was talking about being in toxic relationships. Yeah. Is, is what I'm doing right now, is it moving me forward or is it moving me backwards? Right. Yeah. Very true. So true. Now, tell me a little about your, your book. Like, what inspired you to write that book? Now, you were talking about it a little bit in the beginning, but, you know, you wrote it during covid and, you know, with it, what you wanted to, it was more for you than it was for anybody else. But was there a purpose, like something, is it something that you went through in life that you wanted to get out? Or were you looking to maybe have some therapeutic help for yourself? And then also at the same time, maybe this will help somebody out there. Well, I, 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 this, this has to go back to my mother. Okay. She, she was my greatest cheerleader. <laughs> and uh, again, one day I was driving home from work and I was talking to her about some training and some of the things that didn't get go well, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, well, son, she goes, you can't climb a smooth mountain. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's, that's powerful. Neat. She said, you know, you got, you have to have something, you have to have uh, cliffs and rocks to dig into. So I went home that day. And I wrote down the title of the book. You can't climb, well, you can't see that. You can't yeah. climb a smooth mountain. And uh, within a week, I wrote the outline for the chapters, okay? Now, so that inspired the book. 
But something very serendipitous occurred in my life. Uh, at times, not frequently, thank goodness, yes. but occasionally I'll wake up at two or three o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and I can't go to sleep. And so I'll use the TV to put me back to sleep. Right. So I turned on the TV one evening. This was in December. And I was watching a, a, a program called Celebration. Yeah. And they had Zig Ziglar on there. Okay. And uh, Zig was talking, his daughter had just passed away. And he was talking about, uh, he wrote a book on a grieving Christian. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just watching that and I was feeling it in my heart. I thought the next morning I said, I'm, this is before emails. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to write him a letter. And so I sent him a letter just saying how much that touched me and et cetera, et cetera, for him to be able to express himself that way Yeah, of losing a child. And maybe two weeks after I wrote the letter, I called his office and his assistant said, you're that young man that wrote Zig the letter, aren't you? And I said, yes. And she said, Zig wants to meet you. And so I scheduled an appointment to go by his office. And at that point, I only had the introduction of my book written. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I shared that with him. And I shared him with him the outline of the other 10 chapters. And he encouraged me. And he said, see, I now I'm going to go off rail for a second, but I just got to tell you the story the way it was, Stacy. He said, C.I., he said, you didn't come up with this book. God gave you this book. And he says, and if you don't write it, someone else will. And I said, okie dokie. Mm -hmm. And from there on out, he would call me maybe once a month, once every two months. Uh, I'm in his autobiography. Uh, and I remember once I was attending a, 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 a speech that he was doing at Reunion Center, over 25,000 people in there. And he would mention me in his speech. He'd go, my buddy C.I. Dixon is writing a book, You Can't Climb a Smooth Mountain. And he'd put up a little graft of it, and that's the whole nine yards. And um, he called me up and he'd go, C.I., now don't you make me into no liar. Finish the <laughs> book. <laughs> <laughs> So between Zig and my mother, I had to get it done. But right. what happened, Stacy, is I was always so busy running around doing training, to which I love doing, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you know to write, you got to have quiet time. Yeah. I mean, and then you got to have discipline. You got to say, and, and Zig gave me techniques, but I didn't adhere to them. He said, just write one page a day. Right. He said, just write one page a day. He said, at the end of the year, you got 365 pages. That's true. Yeah. He said, just write one page a day. And uh, I was always working on the goals of my clients and doing this and looking at their key function indicators because I also help my clients with process and quality control. Mm -hmm. But when the pandemic hit, the brakes went on my training life. Yeah. And I was like, man, what am I going to do now? And uh, my mother and my wife said, you know, how long have you been working on that book? I said, yeah, quite a while. <laughs> they said, well, now you got the time to finish it. And that's what I did. <laughs> that's great. That is great. So the whole purpose of the book is to inspire people, to to show people that they're going to go through ups and downs in their life. And this is how you overcome them. Is that how you overcome premise? them? Uh, some of the things we talked about, how do you um, surround yourself with positivity? Uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, in my final chapter, I have uh, a chapter called dropping the rope. That which means like if you think about when you see people climb mountains, when the first person gets up to the top, they drop the rope. Right. So other so other people can have it. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and so once you have overcome certain challenges in life or you've had certain successes, mm -hmm. you should drop the rope. You should mentor other people. Yeah. You should aid other people. You should encourage other people in, in their process. I love so it. dropping that rope. I love it. I love it. That is amazing. So I, I was just thinking, uh, I won't... 
belabor you with this, but you asked me a question, so mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we talk about preparing for the climb, like uh, you know when you 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 can't uh, you can't climb a mountain if you got a huge back. Yeah. So that means that the people that you haven't forgiven, the waste that you're carrying, your past failures that you're constantly looking at, all that stuff just weighs you down. Yeah. So how can you move to a positive future if you got a negative past that you're hanging on to? Right. It won't happen. And so then we talk about turning the, we already talked about turning your stones into steps, staying put, uh, fit for the climb, and then uh, envisioning your mountain. So that's like seeing your goal, seeing that mountain top. Yeah. Uh, so so the mountain, uh, I only climbed a mountain one time. That's when I was in college. And it, <laughs> but uh, uh, but it's somewhat, it's a metaphor. Yeah. If you will. And then I take the various stages of climbing a mountain mm -hmm. and turned it into a book. I love it. I love it. Yes. Now, what type of services do you offer? Because you have a lot of different things on your website. So tell us about the services you offer. Well, um, probably 80% of what I do is training and coaching. Mm -hmm. And so it may be like I was talking to a client yesterday that uh, they're having some team problems. Right. So we're going to do some team building training for them. Right. That focuses on communication, how to empower the people, how to get people on the same sh sheet of music. So team building is one thing. I also do training in personal leadership. And, th and that's kind of more what my book is like. Mm -hmm. Personal leadership, goal setting, getting balance in your life. Uh, and uh, you think, why would a business buy that? But when the people are better, the business is better. So exactly. when people are more whole, the business is more whole. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I use that personal leadership course mostly when I'm going into a union environment. Right. Because they spend all their energy fighting each other. Yeah. I work with groups on communication. Uh, we do some quarterly strategic planning where I come in every quarter and let's say, which are not, a lot of companies do five year and one year plans. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking about being in the now. Yeah. That's too far out there. Oh, for sure. So we do quarterly strategic uh, planning. I do sales training, time use, uh, communication training, and I also work with managers. Okay. So it, uh, I, I have a course that I've written called Building Effective Leaders. Nice. So, and uh, and then my team building course is Building a Winning Team. So we do all that. And then, and then um, I also spend time, I have clients that, I do executive coaching. So at times I may have a president that doesn't want to be transparent in front right. of the team. Mm -hmm. So they'll call me and say, can you work with me one-on-one -on, -one on these problems? And I will. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Very nice. It's so important to have good leadership because that's what we'll, that's what makes a strong nation. That's what makes a strong company. That's what makes a strong person. Yes. Like leadership is a very important thing that people have to incorporate into their lives. Even if you don't work for a company, you should have leadership qualities. Yes, for sure. Definitely. And then and then also the other 10% is public speaking. I love it. I love it. Now, yeah. if, if you had to take a couple of takeaways, everything that we talked about today, what are some important things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners? Perhaps most important is surround yourself with positive people, places, and things. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, number two, that what you project in life is what you attract. Yes. So you have to project positively so that you can attract that. Mm -hmm. And um, you are not put on this earth to fail. Right. And not to compare yourself with other people, because the more that the more that you do, the more unsuccessful you'll feel. Yes. Compare yourself with who you are and who you're becoming. Mm hmm.
So that's what I'd like to share here, Stacey. I love it. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Well, uh, a couple of places. You can go to www.cidixon.net. Mm -hmm. And right there on my website, it'll tell you everything about me, okay? Uh, I do have a Twitter account, which is called Climbing at C.I. Dixon, but uh, I'm not really active on that a whole lot. Uh, and then you can uh, also look up C.I. Dixon on LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. you can follow me on LinkedIn as well. Excellent. Excellent. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope we could have you on in the future because you have a wealth of information. That's just amazing. Well, Stacy, you know what? Thank you for reaching out to me. <laughs> I really uh, appreciate it uh, very much. And uh, again, <clears throat> mm, www.cidixon.net. So that'll be pretty easy to remember. <laughs> and uh, people can reach out to me there. Also, if they wanted to email me, it's ci at cidixon.net. So they can do that as well. But the website gives them all the information that they need. LinkedIn gives all my contact information. So those are the best ways to look at me. And you can find your book on your website and Amazon, correct? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com, but uh, I prefer you go to Amazon. Okay, wonderful. This yeah. is, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate your time. I appreciate all your information you have um you have given such great advice today, and I I thank you very much for taking the time to come on the show. And thank you so much, Stacy, for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great okay. day. You have a great day. Make it an outstanding mountaintop day. I will. I'm going to climb and hold on to those rocks real tight. <laughs> okay, very good. Have a great day. You too, Stacy.